Hello and welcome to Reykjavik Grapevine's newscast. My name is Valo Grettisson. I'm an editor-in-chief at Reykjavik Grapevine. At this, of course, dock here, which is uh, I like uh, eyeballing these ducks over there, is, of course, probably my chief of moral officer. Uh, we're going to go on with the news today, but first, a uh, few things I want to tell you. Uh, of course, the stores. We have a wonderful store. You can go online on grapevine.is and find all of this stuff that we have been compiling together. Uh, these are like, ha like hand-picked stuff that we like in Iceland, uh, and all of them are brilliant. I can promise you that. Uh, well, at least uh, I can promise you that. Uh, you never know how people feel about things. Uh, also, tours. We have tours. Uh, if you're actually flying to Iceland, let's say next summer, uh, and you want to go to the, the volcano where, where the lava is, or, or the, the golden Gullfoss, uh, the golden waterfall, uh, or Geysir, or whatever, you can also you can go to our homepage, grapevine.is, uh, like choose uh, tours there, and you can find all of these tours there, and also a special tour, of course, with me and Bjarkmar, uh, an investigative journalist, where we basically uh, go over the history of uh, Iceland and try to explain a little bit why Icelanders are like they are. And we are often odd. Uh, but we, we think we can actually like tell people some new information, specifically if you like, if you really like Iceland, and you think you know it all, we know more. I can promise you that. Also, the quiz. Uh, we had a quiz last uh, for a while ago, actually, uh, and it's time to announce the winner. Uh, first, the question was the most difficult one to date, uh, and it was quite difficult. Even I wasn't sure about this. Uh, and this is the question. Which one of these names is not a common female given name in Iceland? And these are our options. A. Is it Björk? Or is it Eik? Or Fura? Or Usp? And the correct answer here is actually Fura, or Pai. But keep in mind, there are women called Fura in Iceland, but there are, there are only six of them. So uh, if, you, if you actually said Fura, you're not completely wrong. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah, uh, the one that won this was uh, Julie Patrick from Texas that got this right. And congratulations for that. Uh, she will get the Rex, Where the World is Melting, uh, the book by him. Uh, and it's also autog autographed. So it's, it's, it's quite something. Uh, also, uh, a new question, which is one of these is not a famous volcano in Iceland. So what you need to do, and these are the rules, you have to go down here, uh, you have to uh, sign up for the newsletter, and you have to write the answer there. Do it before Friday, that would be tomorrow actually. Uh, and when you do, uh, you can do your best basically. But if you want to comment here, down here, it's no problem. Uh, you will not, won't win anything, but we will know that you're a genius. So, uh, which of these volcanoes is not a famous volcano in Iceland? It's a bit hard question. Is it A, Askja, or is it B, Hekla, or is it C, Katla, or is it D, Krauka? So, these are all very volcanic kind of names, so good luck with that one. <laughs> uh, if, you do, if you win this, actually, you will have a prize, which is a grapevine goodie bag. I forgot it, actually. I was going to bring it here and show all of this to you. Uh, but it's wonderful, I can promise you, a lot of stuff in it, and uh, yeah, on with the news. Okay. First news. Uh, this is quite uh, actually like uh, this is the most morbid news of today. It's very serious. Uh, we have 50 search and rescue people that have to wait a little bit longer to. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Polly is scaring the birds away. So, I'll start with this again. Uh, 50 uh, certain rescue people have to wait a little bit longer uh, to start trying to retrieve the bodies in Thingvallava of these four men that died there in tragic accident last Thursday, a week ago now. Uh, the reason is, more or less, because uh, 
the water is uh, cold and it's, uh, it's frozen uh, and, uh, and the situation is basically exactly like this. This is our pond in Reykjavik, our most famous pond. Got it? I just want to show you, it's like, it's only like minus three or four or something out here. It's not that much. Uh, but it's, uh, it's more than enough for us, to, for this uh, pond here to be frozen. Uh, so, the thing is also that uh, when you're going to the lake in Thingvallavat, Uh, it can be quite, uh, it, like, it changes a lot, uh, and very quickly often. First of all, it's frozen right now, uh, add wind to that, and it will be impossible for those boats to, to do whatever they need to do there. This is one of the factors of trying to uh, uh, rescue these, like, get these bodies up. Uh, but the, the plan is to do this today. Uh, they're going to wait a little bit, uh, perhaps the, the forecast will be better. But they are expecting actually minus 17 in the area, in Thingvelli, which is uh, very cold. Uh, <clears throat> the plan was to, to retrieve the bodies and they, and they want to get the aeroplane tomorrow. Uh, that's a little bit more complicated uh, task because it's on like 50 meters in the water. Um, the bodies are in 15 meters, so it's, uh, it's quite... Uh, it's quite the operation, to be honest. Uh, we, are, we are actually lucky right now because we have uh, nice weather. I know it doesn't perhaps seem like that for everyone, but there are no storms right now. And I think the next storm will, if it will hit us, it will be in the next week. So uh, we, they have a window, like weather window, if you will. Uh, as I said in the last news, newscast, the divers only have a few minutes to retrieve the bodies when they are down there. Uh, the cold is high as well as the pressure, uh, and uh, they have been practicing a lot on land. This means that uh, they only have around six minutes to secure the bodies uh, and get out of there. And there are around 20 divers that are actually working on this operation. Uh, the reason is because you can only dive for 20 minutes uh, and uh, and you can only do it once per day. So, could it? Uh, long one. So, this is quite a challenge, but uh, I, I mean, these people are, the search and rescue teams are amazing. I saw a lot of comments about them. Many know about them, obviously. Uh, this is good. Uh, also, uh, keep in mind, this is completely free. Uh, they do. The, they are volunteers. These are people are everything from engineers to just uh, everyday workers, wherever they are. And they are because they are in certain rescue teams. They are allowed to go leave their job and go uh, and uh, work to get these uh, to rescue people and so on. If you call, for example, the, the search and rescue teams in Iceland, and let's say it's just because you, you did something silly. Uh, this happens. Uh, you are perhaps just uh, hiking in some mountain, they should not be hiking, and you even feel a bit ashamed that nobody like would uh, charge you for any rescue operation or anything. This is all for free. Uh, the, the main goal is basically to keep everyone safe at all times, and uh, also the understanding of people make mistakes. Uh, also, this is often mistakes. People often just just don't get the nature and so on. Uh, this can even happen to Icelanders as well as tourists. So, uh, how they're funded, though, if you're thinking about that, is by firework. Uh, we buy firework from them, and then we uh, shoot them up, and we shoot up fireworks for billions. Uh, this means that they can operate on a very high level uh, the whole year. So, well, <laughs> if anything happens. Uh, so, uh, and on to other things. Uh, there was one more death due to COVID today. There was a woman in her 90s, uh, and uh, the, the, we have uh, 51 deaths from the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, I was wrong last time. I missed one death, actually. There were four, I said there were 49, but there are 51. Like, there were 50 the last time I was uh, talking about it. Uh, of course, the Omicron is ruling everything in Iceland. And I also said that Omicron was uh, less dangerous than the, the other variants. Uh, so in comments that not everybody are on the same page. 
But in Iceland, the numbers don't lie. It's definitely not as dangerous as, uh, as, uh, as in the beginning of the pandemic or as the Delta variation, which was uh, quite bad. For example, there were around 2,000 cases today. This is very high. Uh, there are around 36 people at the hospital and three in, uh, are in critical care. Uh, and this is uh, way less than we used to have in the beginning. So you can obviously see by the numbers that this is not. And of course, the reason that we are in the situation is because 90% of the Icelanders, Icelanders have vaccinated as well as, uh, or have the PCR as well as being vaccinated. And most of us have had the third booster. So this reduces uh, the seriousness of this by 90%. So if you, uh, if you, of course, not vaccinated, just go, go for that. It's, it's much safer than not. Uh, so uh, we are losing like the restrictions slowly, losing the grip of these restrictions. Uh, our epidemiologists say that we are in fact in two weeks ahead of schedule and it comes to losing up the restrictions. Uh, but in March, and April, March or April, uh, the aim is to basically have no restrictions at all. But of course, we would have masks, and the epidemiologist want to have. Uh, he wants to have isolation. We, the, even the, 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 the politicians want to have no isolations and no quarantine. Great. Uh. Of course, the, the epidemiologist is a careful man, uh, and he wants to keep the isolation, although he's not sure about the quarantine. But it will be interesting to see this actually. Uh, but it means that. Uh, uh, we have, we are aiming for no restrictions before the summer, which is, our, of course, good news for those who want to travel to Iceland. Uh, but uh, the borders are still the same as they've been since last year. So you need to go to COVID.is when you're traveling here. But it's bound to, something is bound to change in the, in the end of February when we re revise these rules one more, one more time. Uh, and uh, business. I know not everybody loves business, and God knows that I don't. Uh, but this is uh, the biggest news right now, and we have to go through it. Uh, it's inflation. You know this, of course, uh, uh, from your home countries, prob probably. The inflation is skyrocketing, not only in Iceland. It's also happening in most countries in Europe, as well as in North America. Uh, and we are not unique when it comes to this. Uh, the central bank increased the interest rates by 0.7%, which is the single highest rate since the turmoil of the falling of the banking system in 2008. So, this is bad for numerous of reasons. Uh, we haven't seen this much inflation since our system literally collapsed in 2008, uh, but it's around 5% today uh, and will probably be around 5.8% before this quarter is over. And if you're in business, everybody thinks in quarters, not in, not in seasons or years or whatever. So that's how they, they at least think. Uh, but what does this mean for us, the Icelanders? Well, everything is connected here when it comes to inflation. This will mean that our groceries will be even more expensive. Many people have indexed loans on their houses, and especially the younger people, uh, meaning that the inflation will raise the loan and make it harder for them to pay it off. Uh, this is a huge problem, and the government is working on it. Uh, we know that these uh, numbers, like groceries, everything, it doesn't really matter what it is, everything is going to skyrocketing, skyrocket before the end of the year, probably in the middle of the year. Uh, but how did this happen? That's basically the big question here. Uh, and the answer is quite simple. It always is, although they tried not to make it seem like this, because it's bankers. Uh, 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 the government lowered the capital requirement uh, on the banks, which was actually quite high at the beginning of the pandemic, and they also lowered the bank taxes in hope that it would benefit struggling companies in the pandemic. Ah, uh, get the, the airplane. We really need to move that uh, uh, airport, but that's only me. Yeah, they lowered the bank taxes in hope that it would benefit struggling companies in the pandemic. So the thought was this. 
uh, the banks would have a cheaper way to get uh, loan, like loans to loan to, to companies. But what did they do? Well, instead of loaning the com companies uh, some money, which was struggling in the pandemic, they saw another opportunity, which was basically loaning young people for housing. This basically started some kind of, some kind of a frenzy, which is a way too strong word here, but I'm going to use it anyway. Uh, and this frenzy resulted in that uh, our uh, inflation uh, went very steeply up because everybody was buying houses and everything is connected uh, when it comes to this. So it's, uh, you know, what is this in English? Uh, yeah, the housing loans were basically cheap for the banks, so they put all their energy instead of focusing on companies. Uh, and this resulted that banks had a record profit in, in the pandemic, which is combined around 80 billion Icelandic krona. Uh, so, uh, uh, what do you call this? Yes, the index loans that are uh, like really uh, troubling young people. Uh, and the index loans basically means that uh, when the inflation goes up, the loan go also up as well as a payment. And this is, of course, uh, something that politicians are trying to, to solve, but not everybody is perhaps on the same page. The Social Democrats, as well as the, the minority in, in, in the parliament, uh, they want to solutions which are different from the from the government, but so it is. Uh, we'll see how that just turns out. But what we know now is once again the problem is problem is on the shoulder of us, the taxpayers, uh, but not the bankers. Uh, and it will be interesting to see how this will go. But I mean, bankers are bankers. Feels like uh, like your your drunk uncle always. I don't know. <laughs> They're always doing some some nonsense, and everybody's cleaning up the mess. Uh, and finally, uh, commercial whaling could be banned within two years, according to our new fishery minister, Svantis Svavarsdóttir. Icelanders have, of course, been fishing uh, whales for a, the longest time. Uh, this was important when we were much younger uh, as a nation. Uh, but uh, f from, it was banned in 1986. There was a huge awakening about these huge, beautiful animals. Uh, so we banned it after that, uh, but only to allow it again uh, in the mid of uh, 2000. It was like 2005, 6. And it was a very controversial idea at the time, uh, a decision. Uh, but now how they allowed it was like we were doing this in a scientific kind of a way. But of course, uh, there were like whaling companies that they were doing this in a scientific way, basically just to sell it to Japan. Uh, because nobody else buys whaling meat. Nobody likes... Uh, I mean, I grew up with this stuff when I was younger because it's a, it was a huge... It was like a steak, but still very, uh, very uh, cheap, always been. Uh, and, of course, the reason it's cheap is because it's not that good, uh, in my opinion, at least. And I'm not a fan of... of of whaling meat. I actually like, even today, I ate so much of this when I was a child. And when I taste this, I just get like bad flashbacks, literally. <laughs> so, uh, but the thing is, in only, yeah, we have, uh, and they, like, uh, Iceland's most recent, uh, recent annual quotas allow for us to hunt uh, 209 fin whales, which are considered endangered, and 217 mink whales, uh, which is one of the smallest pieces, species uh, in the world. Uh, but only one whale has been hunted past three years. Uh, and the minister is asking, basically, and did so in an article she published in Morgunbladet, uh, and she asked, like, is this really worth it? This is obviously a huge, uh, what would you say, like, uh, it's, it's, it's really bad for our reputation, uh, and this is a very controversial thing. Uh, Icelanders, though, are more or less uh, okay with whaling. Might sound weird, but Icelanders are not that, like, hard against it, you know. Uh, the reason is often because we grew up with this, for example. Uh, also, uh, some have been saying that it's eating our cod and so on. That's nonsense, actually. There is, seems that it's not that doing that much of, of damage, and it's also keeping more important balance in the ocean than we thought. 
So, uh, but uh, like I said, uh, this will probably be uh, banned uh, but because we have to revise the, the rules about this in 2023. That's why we say within two years. They're not going to do it any, any sooner, but it's pretty like, obvious that nobody's hunting these animals anymore. And uh, the main reason is because nobody's buying it. And you can see a little bit the power of uh, like, like good demonstration. It takes time sometimes. But uh, this is the reality right now. So, like, hopefully this will, they will, they will, like, they, they will not only talk the talk, they will walk the walk, right? So, uh, this is it for us uh, at, uh, this, on this beautiful day in the Reykjavik newscast. Uh, it is a wonderful weather, actually. You can see, that I love to go here to the pond. It's very nice to do it with poly, of course. Uh, this is, uh, it, it always freezes. Uh, we used to, when I was a kid, we used to go here ice skating also, but I haven't seen that here for, for many years though. It would be uh, nice to see someone start that business again, but it, it feels like a business that is not very, li very reliable, like always when it comes to weather in Iceland. Uh, but uh, yeah, remember of course our quiz, newsletter, our tours, uh, if you want to meet me, Polly and Bjartmar. Well, Bjartmar is not that fun of a guy, but no, I'm joking. But uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, and of course, the shop. Uh, and I'll try to remember the goodie bag next time. So, until then. Goodie. <laughs>